Tonight, a family is looking for answers after they say their 90-year-old mother was left outside the Lloydminster bus station in frigid conditions. Plus, I think it will be a, a bringing a very positive impression amongst the students. A new opportunity for Lakeland College students to learn about Indigenous culture. This is New Cap News with Brian Lentz. A woman is seeking an apology from a bus driver after her 90-year-old mother was allegedly left out in the cold in Lloydminster one night last November. Eric Friesen reports. Being on time is essential for transit workers. However, when keeping to schedule puts someone's life at risk, arriving a few minutes late to the next stop doesn't seem all that important. My mom uh, was was on the bus from Saskatoon to Lloydminster on November 17th. And when she, they got into the bus depot in Lloyd, she went to the, the front door of the bus depot to, and wasn't able to open the door. It was locked. The driver told Lucille she would have to wait outside until her daughter arrived because the bus depot was closed. When the elderly woman asked him to take her somewhere so she could get out of the cold, he said there was nothing he could do. I told him, and I said, well, it's not a very nice thing to do. I was, I was 90, years, 90 years old, eh? And that would be kind of, it was kind of hard. I didn't know what to do. I want an explanation from the bus driver as to why he left my mother out in the cold and, and a confirmation that, that he had been reprimanded and that, that I wanted an assurance that nothing like this would happen that, again to to, to somebody that was vulnerable, and I wanted an apology to my mom because the way she was treated wasn't right. Thankfully, a woman who was picking someone up at the bus depot saw Lucille standing alone outside and asked if she could help. She came and got my bags, and then she took me to Tim Hortons, and she gave me her phone number in case I couldn't get my daughter. You know, she was such a nice girl, and Destiny was her name. She seemed to be such a nice girl. And then I sat there till my daughter came. Newcap News reached out to Greyhound Canada for a comment on the incident. They said they will continue to evaluate their hours of operation to ensure their schedules accommodate customers, but did not comment on the issue regarding Mrs. Salzel. Eric Friesen, Newcap News. Well, winter is in full swing, and with that comes the cold. While many will spark up the fireplace to stay warm, there are safety precautions that need to be remembered. With there still being winter months remaining, fire departments across the country continue to ask the public to take proper care of their appliances. With winter, uh, people are using chimneys. Anytime you are using a wood-burning stove, make sure that you do have yearly inspections and cleanings done on your chimney, mm -hmm. uh, just to mitigate any kind of fire risk. Newton also explains the importance of installing proper tools in homes in order to ensure people's safety. Um, anytime you're running gas appliances, such as your furnace, uh, we advise that you do have carbon monoxide detectors in your home. Um, there has been some recent incidences in the province of carbon monoxide and carbon monoxide saves from fire departments. And the Lloydminster Fire Department is a strong supporter of having working smoke alarms in your home. Uh, we'd like to remind all residents to have working smoke alarms and to try and test them monthly. If you have any questions regarding carbon monoxide or smoke detectors, you can contact the Lloydminster Fire Department. When you see news happening, let us know. Grab your phone and hit record and become part of the NewCap News team. It could make you $100 richer. If you capture news happening, drop us an email at tvnews at newcap.ca. Reconciliation is echoing through the halls as Lakeland College opens its Indigenous Student Lounge. Gerard Lampo finds out why it's important for students to have a space to call home. There's some books and some facts and everything in that room that you can learn about the Indigenous community. Janika Okemaobol is just one of the students who will benefit from the new Indigenous Student Lounge at Lakeland College. The educational stalwart is located on Treaty 6 land and the new learning space is open to everyone. I think it will be a, a bringing a very positive impression amongst the students. It will create a 
higher community feelings between amongst the indigenous students and it will also help the other students for example ca Canadians and internationals learn more about the indigenous students a cross-section of the Midwest community took part in the opening of the lounge, which was led off by a smudge ceremony and prayer. The issue of reconciliation remains a pivotal focus. It is a journey that we must take together, this process of reconciliation. And I think the presence of a student lounge that is specifically intended for our Indigenous students is especially important in that. Well, in this day and age, you wouldn't believe that there is culture shock that is still experienced uh, by students and more so the indigenous students because of the cultural uh, contrast that there is between Aboriginal culture, culture and mainstream Canadians. The indigenous lounge will be a place for students to smudge and learn about their traditions. It will also be a place for the wider community to gain an understanding of First Nations culture. It will house the elders program which starts at the college shortly. Chokan stressed that the lounge will be open to everyone to come and learn and there's more to come starting this fall. We'll offer the Alberta Aboriginal Teacher Education Program here on this campus. So Lakeland College, in collaboration with the University of Alberta, is leading learning on the road to a certified understanding of Indigenous issues. Gerard Lampau, Newcap News. Well, a gun and outdoor sports show is planned for this weekend, and the first ever Hockey Hooky Day is next week. Heather Clagus has all the details in this week's What's Happening. This weekend, great opportunity to celebrate the great outdoors. The Lloydminster and District Fish and Game Association is hosting their annual gun and outdoor sportsman show. Great opportunity to find out a little bit more all about it. You can head out to the Service Sports Centre tomorrow and Sunday to check it out. That's also where you can get your tickets for their upcoming Family Wildlife and Awards Banquet. They always have great food on the menu here at the Stockade Convention Centre. Plus, they've got entertainment from Mahoney. So pick up your ticket for that banquet coming up next Saturday night. Everybody's a little bit Scottish when it comes to Robbie Burns Night and Friday, January 26th, it's the annual Robbie Burns Night celebration in Edgerton. They're going to have a delicious meal followed by a Kaylee. If you want to get tickets, you can stop by the Village office, head out for a great time next Friday night. We want you to start off your weekend by winning and we've got a fantastic album you can win. Sean Mendez MTV Unplugged. It includes his hits, There's Nothing Holding Me Back, Stitches, and a whole lot more. If you want a copy, all you have to do is email your name and daytime phone number to tvcontest at newcap.ca. We want to say thanks to John at Universal Music Canada for setting us up with the music. And Wednesday's going to be a really neat day. The Lloydminster Bobcats are hosting Hockey Hooky Day. A number of students from the Lloydminster Public School Division will be at the Civic Centre at noon to cheer on the Lloydminster Bobcats. And you can be a part of it as well. To get your tickets, just call the Bobcats office. Well, whatever you choose to do this weekend, I hope you have a great one. I'm Heather Clegis, and that's what's happening. This is New Cap Sports. The Hillmont Hitmen have had another successful year in Sask Alta Senior Hockey. A year after winning Alberta Provincial AA Bronze, the team with one game remaining has secured first place overall. With Sask Alta playoffs looming, Lance Phillips shows us the team has another battle ahead that hasn't been involved with in a long time. Yes! For the first time in nearly 40 years, Hillmond is hosting a Saskatchewan Senior Provincial playoff game. Game two is scheduled to be played at the Hillmond Redden Arena, and that prospect has players and coaches thrilled. We've had a very good uh, run in the regular season here, getting ramped up for our, our playoffs in the Saskelta, and uh, the, the Provincials is uh, some icing on the cake, so the boys are excited. This is, it's, it's going to be a, a fun run. You're going to be stepping up a notch, right? Like, that's really good hockey, really... And in Saskatchewan, specifically growing up here, like provincial hockey means a lot to uh, all, every small town. You see it every year, right? So everyone's super excited. The team they face in the best of three first round is Wilkie, a team that's seen its share of success. It could prove an interesting matchup, given the two teams play in different leagues 
and have not seen the strengths and weaknesses each brings. What we do know is they are a strong hockey club. Uh, it's my understanding they lost in the finals last year. So uh, good teams don't make it to the or weak teams don't make it to the finals. So we're expecting a challenge, and uh, but we're going to give it all we got. It means that for Sask Alta's first place team, the potential to have two playoff series occurring at the same time is reality. A vision that suits the hitmen just fine. Everybody talks about the grind, but if you're winning, I don't think it's going to feel like a grind. You're going to be excited as all can be that you made it past a round or two or three. And I don't think anyone's really going to be complaining about, you know, and we got to play three, four games this week. They're going to be excited. And right now, you know, you, you look at the prospects. Yeah, it could be a lot of hockey. And given Hillmon's two losses in 15 games, it could be a lot of hockey for a while. Lance Phillips, New Cap Sports, Hillmon. A big weekend is in store for Rustlers Athletics as the volleyball and basketball teams take to the court against the Keanu Huskies. Josh Ryan has more on a series of games that could have a major impact in February. Only one of the Rustler squads in action this weekend is playing without high stakes in regards to the current ACAC standings. The women's volleyball team still sits atop the national rankings and has to manage repetition against a Keanu team that is battling for the postseason. The men are in the midst of a seven match losing streak and face a Husky squad that sits atop the North Division, but the Huskies do come in with several key injuries. Coach Taylor Dyer is focused on execution and limiting errors. I always have to be super active at the net. I think um, being able to slow them down offensively is going to be big for us. And then us putting the ball in play and being consistent. I, I think you couple those two things together, uh, it's going to be, those are going to be the, the big important pieces for us to be uh, successful. The basketball teams left a day early to avoid travel fatigue in their first two league games of the second half. This should help against a pair of Husky squads looking to vault Lakeland in the standings. The women have a particularly tough challenge with several players unable to make the trip because of lingering injuries, forcing Chris King to use his full roster. We're going to move on. We're looking for big things out of a few of the younger girls that haven't got to probably get about 10 or 15 minutes a game, they're probably going to be playing 20 or more. So it's going to be a big opportunity for those kids. For the men, they need a stronger start against the Huskies than last semester, where they dropped the first game and had to come from behind to win in overtime the following afternoon. Key to that end is continuing to play well defensively, as they have kept their opponents under 80 points per game in all but three contests. Josh Ryan, New Cap News.